When the rains fall and the earth begins to drown, the smallest nation on the planet prepares for war, not against an enemy, but against the flood itself. This is not a story of panic or chaos. It is a tale of silent obedience, of a collective mind working as one. No command is shouted, no order is given. Only one purpose echoes through their invisible language, protect the queen. She's not a ruler in the way we understand. She's the heart of the colony, the living memory of their whole civilization. Her survival is everything that counts. As the floodwater breaches the nest, the youngest ants leap first, driven by an instinct older than stone. They lock their jaws and legs, weaving themselves into living chains. A bridge of bodies forms over the rising tide, a path for the queen to cross. They drown by the hundreds, their sacrifice a silent testament to her sacred importance, a bridge built not of wood, but of unwavering devotion. But when the bridge inevitably collapses, they begin again. This is their final strategy. Thousands join together, wrapping and binding into a single, unified mass. A floating fortress rises from the chaos, a raft woven from their own lives. At a glance, it appears to be a frantic cluster, a heap of struggling bodies. But within this living vessel, there is perfect design. Air is trapped between their waxy shells, creating a buoyancy so powerful it cannot be broken. The colony's most precious cargo, the larvae and eggs, are cradled safely in the center. No voice commands them. No single leader directs this intricate dance. Their coordination flows through scent and signal, a chemical language far older than speech. When one ant feels the rising water, the message travels instantly through the network of bodies and the entire colony moves as one organism. A single droplet of rain lands on the queen's shell, but it rolls away harmlessly, deflected by the shield of her protectors. This is the silent, perfect code of survival written into their very being. This is not simply a story about insects surviving a flood. It is a reflection of something deeper, a mirror to our own world. One life may vanish, but the collective endures. The ant does not live for itself, it lives for a purpose that extends far beyond its individual existence. The flood is not their enemy. It is their test, a crucible that forges their unity and reveals the profound philosophy of the swarm.